As always, whenever you give a mathematician a new object, the first question they ask is, what can we do? And so the first thing we do is we define what's called the eigenspace. So given any eigenvalue, the eigenspace is going to be the set of linear combinations of the corresponding eigenvectors. Now, it's a set of linear combinations. We have vector addition scalar multiplication defined, so one question we might wonder about is going to be, does this set of linear combinations of the eigenvectors for lambda, does this form a vector space? And it should actually be fairly easy to verify that the eigenspace is in fact a vector space. And we can go through our checklist of what we need for a vector space and see that the eigenspace does actually fit all of those requirements. It's a proof to, it's a proof that you should be able to do in a few minutes. So you should take a few minutes aside and convince yourself, prove that that actually is the case. Now that we know that the eigenspace is a vector space, is there anything else we can say about it? Well, let's think about that. So let's take a look at how we found those eigenvalues in the first place, the eigenvalues for any matrix. Well, we solved an nth degree polynomial equation formed when we set the determinant of a particular matrix equal to zero. Again, the eigenproblem always has a trivial solution. We're interested in non-trivial solutions, and that's going to occur when we get a coefficient matrix with determinant zero. So now this is a polynomial equation. Its degree is n, and so we know from algebra that such an equation will typically have n roots, some of which might be complex numbers, and importantly, some of these roots might actually be equal to other roots. And when we were looking at algebra, we talked about this as the algebraic multiplicity of a root. And so we can talk about the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue, which is the solution to one of these equations. So, for example, let's take the matrix 31324602. Let's find the eigenvalues of A. And so, again, the eigenvalues are going to be the solution to determinant equal to zero. So I'll form the corresponding matrix. I'll subtract lambda down the diagonal. I'll get my new matrix. I'll find the determinant. After all the dust settles, my determinant is going to give me solutions. Lambda equals 2 twice and lambda equals 5. And so we say that lambda equals 2 is an eigenvalue of algebraic multiplicity 2. Lambda equals 5 is an eigenvalue of algebraic multiplicity 1. Now, you might wonder why we specify algebraic multiplicity in both cases, because when we were talking about solutions to equations, we never had to use that term. We just said it's a solution with multiplicity 2, a solution with multiplicity 1. And the reason that that's important is remember that the eigenvalue is only half the solution to the eigenproblem. This eigenvalue is going to be used to find the eigenvectors for this matrix. And it's conceivable that the eigenvectors, there may be more than one eigenvector for a given eigenvalue. And so we can also talk about the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalues. Now for that, we actually have to find the eigenvectors. So let's go ahead and find that. So lambda equals 2 is an eigenvalue of algebraic multiplicity 2 of our matrix. And the corresponding eigenvector is going to be a solution. Matrix times vector equals 2 times a vector. And so I can set that system of equations up relatively easily. And I can then row reduce the corresponding coefficient matrix. And I get my row reduction to here. I can parameterize my solutions, S, T, minus s minus 3t, and so our eigenvector, first component, second component, third component, and I can split that. I have two parameters, so I'll split that into two actual eigenvectors, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 3, 1, 0. And my eigenvector is going to be any linear combination of those two basis eigenvectors. Now, since the eigenspace for lambda equals 2 can be expressed as a linear combination of these two vectors, we'll say that the eigenvalue has geometric multiplicity 2. And this corresponds to the number of eigenvectors uh, I get for that particular eigenvalue. What about lambda equals 5? Well, we found out that this was an eigenvalue of algebraic multiplicity 1, and so my corresponding eigenvector is going to be a solution to ax equals 5 times my vector x. And this corresponds to finding a solution to the system. First, second, and third components are 5 times whatever they were. And 
I'll rewrite the system as a homogeneous system of equations. I'll reduce the corresponding coefficient matrix. And after all the dust settles, I end up with this. And I get my parameterization. x3 is 0. That's what I actually get from this third row. x2 is going to be my parameter. And x1 is going to also give me that value. And so I get this parameterization of all of my eigenvectors. And there's only one eigenvector. So our eigenspace has geometric multiplicity.